Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 FY23 conference call of Sigachi Industries Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anut Sonpal from Valorum Advisors. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to you all. My name is Anut Sonpal from Valorum Advisors. We represent the Investor Relations of Sigachi Industries Limited. On behalf of the company, I would like to thank you all for participating in the company's earnings call for the first quarter of financial year 2023. Before we begin, let me mention a short cautionary statement. Some of the statements made in today's con call may be forward-looking in nature. Such forward-looking statements are subject to risks and uncertainties which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated. Such statements are based on management's beliefs as well as assumptions made by and information currently available to management. Audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward-looking statements in making any investment decisions. The purpose of today's earnings call is purely to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and financial quarter under review. Now let me introduce you to the management participating with us in today's earnings call and hand it over to them for opening remarks. We firstly have with us Ms. Amitra Arjuna, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. O.S. Reddy, Chief Financial Officer, Ms. Shreya Mitra, Company Secretary. Now without any further delay, I request Ms. Amit Sinha to start with his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Anuj. Very good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to welcome you all to the earnings conference call for the first quarter of FI23. Firstly, I hope everyone is keeping safe and well. In the interest of some of the people who are new to the company, let me first start by giving a brief overview of the company, after which Mr. O.S. Reddy, our CFO, will brief you on the financial performance for the quarter and the review. Sigachi was incorporated in the year 89, 1989, and today we are one of the leading manufacturers of microcrystalline cellulose in the world. Our company manufacturers uh, manufacture high-quality cellulose-based recipients, which uh, predominantly find usage in the pharmaceutical, supplement, and food industry. The company has created a niche in manufacturing highly innovative pre-formulated excipients and 60 plus widely used excipients of international quality standards apart from the customized solutions. From our state-of-the-art R&D facility, we ensure continuous innovation to efficiently meet evolving customer demands. <clears throat> we have two manufacturing facilities in Gujarat and one in Telangana, from where we ensure supply chain reliability for our customers in India and across the globe. Our total capacity from all these three facilities is more than 13,000 metric tons per annum, uh, which we are further enhancing through our ongoing CAPEX plans to 20,000 metric tons per annum. We at Sugachi have a global sales and distribution network and export to more than 45 countries across Asia, Australia, the American continent, Europe and Middle East. Now I would request our CFO to give you a brief on the financial performance, after which I'll give you the operational highlights of the quarter. Over to OSR. Thank you, Mr. Sinha, and good afternoon, everyone. Let me brief you on the financial performance of the first quarter of financial year ending 2023. The operational revenue for the first quarter was Rs. 78 crores, representing an increase of around 43% year-on-year. EBITDA reported was Rs. 16 crores, which an increase of approximately 34% year-on-year, and the EBITDA margin stood at 20.82%. The net profit after tax reported was Rs. 13 crores, which increased by 42% year-on-year, while the tax margin percentage was 16.35%. Now, I hand over the call back to our MD to give you the operational highlights. Over to... Thank you, CFO. Yeah, thank you. yeah. Thanks, CFO. So, on the operational front, uh, the revenue growth was primarily driven by increased demand for MCC across all the industries, with a volume growing at approximately 10% and realizations at 19% on a Q-on-Q -Q basis, quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. The export sales increased to 75.43% in Q1 FY23 as compared to 73.6% in Q1 FY22. 
due to the continuous efforts of, on enhancing the global client base through our marketing and product customizations. We focused on high margin yielding product mix with cost effective manufacturing processes and effective management of inventory, which resulted in improvement of EBITDA and profitability on, on a quarter on quarter basis. The consumption of material reduced to 47% uh, from 51% in Q1 FI22 due to adoption of effective processes and, of course, a favorable product mix. We expect this trend to continue and sustaining the profitable levels. Furthermore, capacities of around 7,000 tons will be added during the later part of FI23, which will contribute to additional revenue growth in the coming financial years. We are also putting high focus on our R&D capabilities through cost-effective manufacturing processes, thereby remaining as the manufacturer of choice and supplier of choice in the XCPM industry. With this, uh, we are now open, on, open the floor to the question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question? May please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Keshav Kumar from Raxon's Investors. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, sir. Congrats for a good quarter. I have a couple of uh, questions. The, uh, the first one is the director of our uh, uh, statutory auditor, Mr. Adi Narayan. He's also the director of Usha Kiran Finance, which was allotted shares on a preferential basis back in 2013. And uh, Amit sir is disclosed as a part of the promoter uh, with 0.1% holding in uh, that company. The, and the tra transactions with uh, Mr. Adi Narayan actually go even further back to 2008 when our then subsidiary Sigachi Laboratories onboarded Mr. Adi Narayan as a director. And in 2010, uh, uh, Mr. Ravindra Sinha ceased to be the director and the said company is currently promoted by our current uh, statutory auditor under, under the very same name of Sigachi Laboratories. So due to these observations, it's sort of difficult to assert, ascertain true independence of the auditor. So firstly, what would be your comment on these observations? And what steps could the management take to ascertain interests of the minority shareholders? Uh, thanks a lot, Keshav. Uh, I would just like to bring out that uh, Mr. Adi Narayana is, of course, uh, the promoter of Figachi Laboratories, uh, which was uh, founded way back in early 90s, 93-94 to be precise. And uh, during one of our fundraise, uh, his uh, uh, NDFC, Ushakaran Finance, uh, had invested into our shareholding, uh, I, I think that was around 20 years back. And uh, uh, that is how uh, when uh, they had, uh, we had increased shareholding in the sense uh, when we had uh, 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 I, I think uh, it was a bonus uh, bonus issue. Uh, they the shareholding, uh, they're not the shareholding. The shares went up further. Um, it it just so happens that uh, he his company name of the auditor is T Adinanan, but the partner of the uh, company is different. Uh, it is uh, uh, Mr. Pinarao. And uh, they, I don't see this as any conflict of interest because uh, there is no direct involvement of any of the auditors, uh, any of the T. Uh, Adinana and core company people in uh, um, the Pular House uh, audit works. Uh, CFO, could you just substantiate what I speak? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, this uh, Mr. Adinarayana, he is uh, no way related to the firm T. Adinarayana and company. He is not even a partner or, or uh, he doesn't have any nexus with this firm now. Even that time he has started that firm, but uh, that firm is completely uh, being run by Mr. Y. Pullarao. Uh, and uh, Mr. Adinarayana, he doesn't have any nexus with this company also now, as of now. Only Usha Karan uh, uh, has got some uh, shares. That is uh, long back uh, it had hold and it continues to hold. And there is no conflict of interest. And uh, since long he is 
Sure, sir. Sir, the second one is uh, the a uh, policy of one percent uh, says as LT the family trust uh, 2025 onwards. I believe is again uh, prejudicial to the interests of minority shareholders. I could have understood this if we were a uh, conglomerate and one of the interests of the parent company had to pay royalty to the parent for technical support, and that could justify the expense as a compensation for the time and resources provided. But in our case, the cost of this is very substantial for our size. Like alignment to revenues disregards bottom line. For example, if we grow our revenues at a 15 to 20 percent CAGR or double in four to five years, the then royalty charge would be 10 percent of the current EBITDA. And as we see in these inflationary times, pricing alone can push the top line without being a function of volume or product mix. So if we don't increase our margins enough to offset that, the charge hits us right there. So it's in essence, a call option in which the manager's incentives are aligned to the top line, but minority shareholders, the shareholders are entitled to dispensable cash as dividends or the per share uh, net earnings. So our incentives are solely dependent on the profitability of the enterprise, which further depends on the agility of the business model and the capital allocation. And thirdly, in that very order, the last is sales. So I would sincerely request the management to align royalty incentives to bottom line or rectify it to a performance linked compensation scheme. Otherwise, there will be the, 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 the only then will uh, the interest be to, totally aligned at both our ends. Uh, fine, sir. I think uh, we take this uh, suggestion positively. Uh, we will do our homework and uh, see which way we can align it uh, to the bottom line rather than aligning it to the top line. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Meet Kotaria from Nivshai. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. I'm audible. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, yes, Meet. Yeah. Yes, sir. My first question is that uh, due to rising inflation across the globe, do you see any impact on demand as majority of our revenue come from US? And uh, what will be the revenue guidance for upcoming year? So uh, we we of course are seeing rising inflation, uh, but however we are not really seeing it impacting our demand. Uh, it, it Maybe the prime reason is that uh, we are primarily catering to the pharmaceutical industry, which is at, uh, you know the news. Uh, so we don't see it uh, tapering our demand in any way. Uh, in the U.S., in fact, uh, our, uh, the sales have been pulling up uh, much more. So uh, we don't see it uh, tapering down just because of uh, inflation. Yes. And uh, what will be the revenue guidance for upcoming year? Uh, we we believe that uh, whatever has been a CAGR over the last three years, we would be able to continue to maintain it, sir. Yes, sir. My next question is that our com uh, competitor like uh, Gujarat Microvax uh, have a more margin than yours. Uh, like uh, in FI21, they have margin, EBITDA margin like 30% net. And uh, in FI22, they, they also have 23% of margin. So any chance that uh, our margin will improve further? Uh, well, sir, you have certain details of our competitor. Could you just bring out those details as to which way the, the margins seem better than uh, Filachi? Uh, just, just for information, while Elsa digs into the details, uh, we had done this analysis around a year back uh, when we were going public, and uh, we, what we saw was that our margin percentage uh, over the product MCC uh, was better than their product. Uh, now, uh, it so happens that uh, JRS has an additional product by the name of cross cormelar sodium, and uh, there the margins are much superior. So, if you compare uh, all in all, uh, you would see that Gujarat Microvax the margins are better than Sigachi's, but if you just compare their product portfolio of MCC with our product portfolio of MCC, uh, we are definitely better off than them. Yes, sir. Uh, well, sir, you'd like to add in anything? Yes, yes sir. Uh, to supplement it, uh, in future, uh, we are going to manufacture this uh, other MCC, even CCS and uh, other complex uh, tech events also. Thereby, our margin also, we hope it will increase. Okay, and my last question yeah, is that we have analyzed yeah, uh, their um, uh, profit also. They manufacture along with MCC, they manufacture CCS and other uh, small uh, other experience uh, also. That's why there is a higher uh, margin is there for them. Okay, 
Even going forward, uh, we hope for Pikachu also will uh, uh, end okay. in March. Yes, sir. And my last question is that uh, what is the current realization for the product and what is the impact of uh, Old Bucks Life? Uh, could you please repeat? Yes, sir. What is the current realization for the product and what is the impact of good pulp pricing? Uh, yeah, current realization is uh, for first, first quarter it is uh, 216, uh, around 217 rupees. Last year it was 182 rupees. And uh, going forward, uh, this will increase further. Yes. And uh, any impact on good, uh, impact of food prices? Uh, yes, I would answer that. Uh, so uh, what, we, what we have seen, sir, is that at this moment, we are able to pass on the, uh, the increased pulp prices onto the customers. Uh, so uh, that's a very big comfort. Uh, we hope that the wood pulp prices uh, should average out and should get stable very soon. We were expecting it to happen at in the Q2, but uh, it, it still continues to be uh, you know, um, going up a bit. But uh, we are hopeful that by the first half of the year, uh, it should stabilize and probably uh, later uh, even taper down. Okay, sir. Thank you. I have more question. I will come back in the queue. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. That is in the line of Rajesh Jain from NB Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. Am I audible? Good afternoon. Yeah. Uh, yes, Rajesh. Um, good afternoon, sir. How are you, sir? I'm fine. Thank you, Rajesh. Uh, I hope you're also keeping well. Yes, sir. We are good. Sir, I have broadly three questions. Uh, one is with reference to the nutraceutical segment, uh, which you have announced quite some time back, where we have uh, entering into that segment, which has a huge potential. Uh, the press release yes. doesn't talk about uh, one who are the main copy competitors and what are the benefits okay. that company would be offering to you know these competitors uh, these custom their customers to get the business from them. Okay, so uh, so you would like to have the name of the competitors and which way uh, the customers would uh, get benefited. On account of uh, you know customer acquisition priorities, is that right, sir? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, like like we indicated in the press release, uh, we are looking ahead, uh, or rather, we have already launched the, the you know the human nutrition vertical of our uh, nutritional segment, and uh, that primarily would be looking at uh, certain premixes, uh, which are uh, the need of the R uh, in uh, certain uh, end market segments like. Uh, the fortified food and beverages, which is a private segment. Uh, we also have the fortified food and beverages, which is the institutional segment, which is more on the D2G, the government part, where there, there is on tender. Uh, we have uh, the pharmaceutical premises, which is again uh, going in for uh, the tablets, which has uh, specifically certain vitamins and to an extent certain minerals uh, being taken in. So these are the certain premixes at which we are focusing on. Now, in terms of our uh, uh, custom um, competitors, I would say uh, Hexagon could be uh, one of them. Uh, there, there, is, there are private limited companies like PD, Navkar, uh, Sup uh, Supreme Pharmaceuticals. Uh, these, these are some of the customers. Uh, DSM also, DSM I could qualify as uh, the market leader in the premix segment. So these, these are uh, the competitors. Now, in terms of the value add over what my other uh, competitors are doing, uh, because of our expertise in the formulation segment, uh, we do have strength in, uh, you know, in the tablet technologies and the suspension technologies wherein we could work on giving them a better product mix uh, wherein their tableting activities at the formulator's end would uh, go without a rejection wherein we will be able to put in a better mix of vitamins uh, so that their end criteria is met. Uh, I, I'll just give you an example, sir, to one of our prospective customers who is a very big company, um, in fact, they're a conglomerate. Uh, we, we were discussing about fortification of tea leaves. And uh, in the tea leaves, uh, the customer wanted uh, vitamin A and vitamin D to be fortified so that uh, they could show it as uh, fortified and uh, it could be advertised to the customers accordingly.
Hello. Hello. Uh, Mr. Jain, Hello. are you done with your question? Yeah. yeah, I have, uh, sir, okay, in, in further to this uh, product segment, uh, I was told that, you know, these new products uh, have MCC as one of the constituent. So does it mean that are we supplying, uh, you know, MCC also these, uh, to these customers earlier? To these customers, we are not selling directly, uh, but uh, we sell to the agents, but they may take it from them, but uh, we are not selling to these people directly. We were not selling. The, yes. Okay, man, the purpose of asking that question was, uh, once you launch these products, do we have to conduct uh, testing or trials for this new product with these customers? Yeah, yeah, yes, we need to do it. Okay, so sir, how much time will this take for the product to commercially launch? Uh, it will take, uh, maybe uh, immediately we can do it, but only trial it will take, uh, as a trial order we will provide and they test the quality test and all, if that is okay we will produce. It will not take uh, much time, even uh, not more than uh, even uh, one day or uh, even 24 hours or even just uh, within two days, 48 hours max. It depends upon, upon the product, how many stages are there like that. It, uh, even uh, in 12 hours also we can complete the trial. And a maximum of even uh, 72 hours. Very 40 to 72 hours on higher side. For this product, the same as it's at the same level as the MCC, and how much revenue can be expected in the next two to three years? Yeah, MCC also is uh, part of this uh, material uh, that uh, product, and uh, uh, you are asking uh, something else. Uh, no, uh, margins. Margins, yeah. Margins, sir, that is, uh, here also there is a sales mix is there, depending upon the product, and uh, we hope little lesser than uh, MCC, but uh, here uh, we'll get even uh, turnover, uh, we have asked, uh, this may be in uh, current year, uh, we may be reaching around 18 to 20 CR. Okay. Uh, that is it. And how big is the potential, sir? Let's say three years or five years down the line, can we go up to 100 plus crores in this segment alone? Uh, in this segment, uh, nearly uh, not less than 50 uh, crores as of now. But uh, going forward, uh, in a, that we have to assess further. Okay. Uh, but sir, uh, it will, there is a good, good uh, scope is there for growth. Okay. Sir, in the one of the interviews post listing, uh, you had mentioned about you know food industry going to contribute around 30 percent to the sales in you know FI23. So this product uh, which you are giving uh, for nutraceutical segment, uh, that is not part of that uh, food segment, right? Ah, uh, yeah, that is not uh, that part of. See, uh, that uh, our statement was uh, with respect to our MCC. Our MCC we supply to pharma and nutra and food and cosmetics, chemicals, paint, all these other uh, uh, these thing applications are there. In okay. that, uh, slowly food uh, percentage also it is uh, going up. In that context, we told. Okay. Earlier it was uh, very less and then uh, slowly food is also picking up and then it is uh, occupying the, uh, some uh, increase, the increasing its spike. Okay. So my second question is uh, regarding the, uh, you know, the uh, you know, the CCX uh, CapEx. So, are we doing at the H or at Kernel? Uh, that uh, we'll uh, move to the H only, the H. Because uh, have... all our uh, uh, other uh, experience, even uh, that is uh, closer to the existing uh, uh, facility at the H, one kilometer away, uh, and uh, there only we wanted to set up uh, the CCC. Uh, manufacturing facility also because for administrative convenience and so we want to have to transfer uh, that we want to, to move that uh, CCS project to the H. But have you already have got the land there? Yeah, that is um, uh, the other uh, process and all it's going on. Land already we have procured uh, and uh, the other uh, environmental clearances and other uh, licenses and all uh, it's going on. The process is going on. So are you confident of commissioning this plan by Q1 of next financial year? 
Uh, no, it will take little time. For CCS, it will take time. But uh, the existing expansion at Dahej and Jagadia for MCC, that will come into operational from fourth quarter of this year, FI-23. So now that you have acquired this land at the hedge, so are you going for any change in capacity for CCS? CCS, uh, right now, okay, maybe uh, small uh, variation, but not uh, very huge. Not very huge. That anyway, at the uh, appropriate time, we'll uh, announce it again. Okay. Once it comes, all the approvals and all we take, and then uh, we'll uh, announce it. So my third and last question is uh, regarding the the you know recently announced uh, entrance to this OTC product. So yes. so if you could share some data about you know what are these products, where they will be manufactured, who are the competitors, some information about these things. Sir. Yeah, yeah, that uh, our uh, MD will uh, update you. Right now I have uh, limited information. Uh, but in this uh, OTC, that also will make an announcement and uh, then uh, you will get the more details. For time being, we will defer uh, that question. Okay, but uh, are we expecting any sales during this current year and next year? Yeah, current year also we are expecting uh, some sales and next year as well. Current year also some sales will come. Uh, we will announce it. Hello? No problem. Hello. Uh, yeah. Currently, also we are expecting some sales. Okay. Uh, and sir, uh, you have already given a guidance for the top line, saying that you will maintain whatever you have been uh, achieved during last three years. So, yes. but as far as the bottom line is concerned, there is considerable growth during last three years. Can we expect uh, improvement in margins going forward also? Yeah, we hope that will uh, increase, sir, uh, because uh, our sales mix is changing which is uh, in the uh, composition of there are uh, special grades and some premium grade portion is uh, increasing, thereby where uh, we get higher margins. Okay. Uh, that's why because of that uh, change in sales mix, we are uh, getting the higher uh, product margin, higher margin, and that will continue. So that means you expect uh, whatever yeah, the growth in top line is there, bottom line would grow better than that. Uh, bottom line also will grow. At least uh, there is a, definitely there is a sustainability in uh, uh, bottom line profit and uh, uh, we hope it will increase further. Thank you very much sir, for answering all the questions. Thank you sir. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference, we request you to limit your questions to two per participant only. If time permits, you can come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. The next question is in the line of Anand from AS Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. Am I audible? Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, uh, yes, Anand. Yeah. yeah, so first question is about the nutraceutical segment. So, sir mentioned about, uh, about 18 to 20 crore sales expected with FI23. So at what sales level, like uh, what is the cost structure here and at what uh, sales level will we break even sir, in this segment? Yeah, this is a bit of positive this year. We or? need to get some uh, details, but uh, the margins are, as I said, uh, this is a little lower than uh, uh, the MCC will be there. Mm -hmm. So will we, will this uh, be a bit of positive this year? Yeah, yeah, the EBITDA, positive only would be there. We expect uh, the positive EBITDA only. So in the sense that uh, will there be any like uh, higher cost as we are launching this new division and because of that EBITDA uh, margin will get lower? Is there, is there, is there a possibility but, uh, like this? Lower would be there, but uh, okay. Uh, but uh, this uh, still uh, that is under initial stage and uh, we'll come up uh, the outcome with uh, in okay. time. Okay. okay. And similarly about this OTC segment also, uh, like what kind of investment is required here and uh, uh, like Investment what? also not much because uh, we get these products manufactured from outside, uh, contract manufacturing, and then uh, we will sell. And uh, through with this, uh, our marketing network also will increase. We will have uh, improved marketing network and uh, uh, maybe in this segment also uh, little, uh, even uh, less than uh, the MCC margins, but it is an additional revenue without, with the minimum capital. This is only we do not set up any manufacturing facility. And we get these products manufactured uh, from third party and on our uh, brand name we sell. 
Okay, so this uh, will this require like a lot hiring of lot of uh, MRs and all that, like how like, uh, for the distribution network and like how does it work? Do we have the distribution network for uh, this OTC segment? Yeah, yeah. Right now we are establishing. It. We are we are we are establishing. Can I speak just? Hello. Ah, yeah. Right now we are establishing this uh, distribution network and market network. We are establishing. and uh, which is uh, which will be helpful for our uh, otc and uh, neutra marketing market also okay uh, i am done with my question thank you yeah uh, thank you thank you the thank next you. question is on the line of darshil zaveri from crown capital okay. please go ahead uh, hello sir good afternoon sir am i audible yeah, good afternoon sir Yeah, uh, so congratulations on your audible. Yeah, congratulations on a good set of numbers, sir. So I'm a bit new to the company, so could I just uh, ask a few basic questions? Uh, are new capacities supposed to kick in by end of this year? Uh, so uh, what kind of? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I lost the last question. What kind of? Yeah, yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah, please. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, I was yeah. just asking uh, that uh, I'm a bit new to the company, so sorry for the basic questions. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to know uh, our new capacities are kicking in uh, at the end of the this end of this year. So in FY24, what additional revenue can we expect, and what could be the capacity utilization for the new capacities? Yes, the new capacities which will come into uh, line is uh, 7,000 metric tons per annum. That uh, will come in uh, fourth quarter. Fourth quarter maybe we will be occupying a very small uh, uh, portion of it. And uh, in uh, by 24 uh, we will be achieving uh, 60% of that uh, increased capacity. Anyway, the existing capacities we are operating at even uh, 95%. and uh, also uh, the growth in this year's revenue how much would it be driven by volume and how much would it be by value yeah volume more in the first quarter that is uh, 10% and the value is around 20% 19 19 20% is there uh-huh. so uh, will that because, continue uh, in third quarter or the third quarter additional uh, quantities will come and then uh, it will add up more in uh, quantity <laughs> Uh, so okay, could you uh, sorry to interrupt uh, mr zaveri there's a lot of disturbance yeah, from your line uh, uh, oh yeah uh, i'm uh, a bit better right now uh, so slightly better so you may please proceed yeah uh, sorry so uh, sorry sorry for the disturbance i just wanted to ask so we have a volume growth of 10% and value growth of 20% uh, so that should continue this year Uh, this year, uh, fourth quarter, we are adding up uh, additional uh, uh, this thing capacity, and with that, the uh, quantities will add little more. And uh, anyway, uh, that uh, price realization will uh, increase because of uh, the healthier sales mix. Because the special grade sales sales mix is increasing, because of that, uh, it will increase. The price also will increase, and uh, the quantities also will increase. Because right now we don't have uh, the capacities, also we are operating at around 95%. And uh, fourth quarter we'll get the additional capacities, and then uh, quantities also will go up. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you so much. That answers all my questions. So all the best for the future. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yogansh Jaiswani from Mittal Analytics. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, please. I will. Okay. Hello. Uh, question. So, on the OTC side, the new building that you mentioned, uh, you you clarified that you won't be setting up a manufacturing union while you do the trading it. So, uh, given our historical experience, uh, why are we venturing into this uh, segment? And also, from what I understand, uh, this is a very very competitive area, and uh, our expertise has been more on the MCP and the HCP side. So why have we taken this decision to get into this segment, especially at a time when we are having a very big capex ongoing of 120 plus? Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Jaiswani. There's a lot of disturbance from your line, yes, sir. Yes, yes. 
Hello. Yes. Yes. Sir. yes. Is it better now? So slightly yeah. better. Yeah. So I'm saying uh, the OTC segment that we have launched. Why are we getting into this, especially at a time when we have already committed ourselves to a very big capex? Yeah, that uh, capex anyway that is uh, going on. This uh, existing MCC expansion is going on, and CCC, CCS also cross carbon sodium also that will go. And uh, apart from that, uh, this OTC or uh, this uh, nutraceutical, uh, this marketing network is required, and then uh, even that marketing network will help for further uh, increase in uh, sales of MCC. Uh, that's why here uh, we are not uh, setting up of any manufacturing facility. Uh, only we get it manufactured from uh, outsiders. We contract research, uh, contract manufacturing we do, and then uh, we sell our uh, products. And right now, uh, for the initial uh, basic information, and then after our uh, complete study, uh, there is some uh, uh, decent margins are there. But okay, anyway, uh, uh, we agree that uh, there is uh, less than uh, the MCC margins are there. But anyway, we don't uh, we don't have to incur any capex, and we get uh, some margin which will uh, add the two top line and bottom line as well. Right. No, I agree on the uh, I agree on the part wherein you say that there is no capex. But my limited point or uh, clarification that I need is that uh, at a time when we are already you know uh, putting up a huge capex, which obviously will take in a lot of management bandwidth and energy in establishing this, because uh, again bringing in a new product like CCS and then also almost doubling our capacity in MCC. that itself will take a lot of time and effort and energy and money so then at at such a time why bring in a new uh, segment which per se is not a very uh, you know high margin or or a very interesting segment so yes. any yeah. any specific yeah. if yeah. i may add yeah. 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 uh, what's up ah uh, yes sir uh, yes uh, if i may answer this sir am i audible yes. yeah yeah you are sir yes, sir. Yes, yes. So, uh, like you indicate that a significant bandwidth of the management is going into uh, the capex and the added capacities. Uh, I would say, of course, there is a, a reasonable amount of bandwidth going, but it is not that we are at on the job. Uh, we have team members. Uh, we have a total strength of 900 people in Sigachi, and there is a specific hierarchy, and there are uh, team man team managers. and uh, you know vps who are taking care of their respective part and sections so uh, it is not that uh, i physically have to go and review which way what's going on uh, so it's not that uh, there is a limitation on the bandwidth uh, my uh, second point would be that uh, you know uh, mcc we have matured out and we are among the leaders and by virtue of being that we are able to command a specific premium and uh, of course have a reasonable ebitda uh likewise uh, when we get started in the other segment of course it will not be as good as uh, the excipient industry what we are today uh, but our overall objective is that uh, we get into the b2c space because uh, b2c space in this segment uh, there is bound to be growth coming in in fact it's already post covid there has been a lot of change in the uh, consumer behavior and uh, we feel that uh, we have the inherent competence to take advantage of this by having certain products which are aligned to the customer needs uh, in line with our r&d and capability and the competence and uh, be able to push this into the market when we take our baby steps uh, we of course will not have such margins but going forward as we expand have brand extensions coming out of whatever we sell we are bound to be getting into positions where we are among the top few and thereby we will be having a reasonable level of margins our overall long term objective is that we remain ahead of positive of the 20% ebitda what we have been uh, having all these years all right uh, that should be helpful sir so my second Sorry, question sir uh, mr jaiswani may we request that you return to the question this is please? just my second question uh, sir there are participants waiting for their turn sure thank you the next question thank you sir The next question is on the line of Darshit Shah from Nirvana Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, yeah, so my question is to Mr. Amit. Uh, so uh, we, we we spoke about JRS numbers, and I understand JRS 
the contribution of CCS is almost 50%, and that's the reason the margins are higher. Now, if we look at another company which uh, we dig a little deep into, that's Signet Excipients. Uh, I'm not sure whether they're manufacturing here or kind of trading. They are now 70% held by IMCB India. And their NCC yes. uh, sales, if you look, uh, the realizations are quite high, around 6 lakh uh, rupees per metric ton. So mm-hmm. any uh, mm-hmm. thoughts mm-hmm. or uh, idea you'd have about that, why the realization is so high for their MCC sales? Yes. Yes, yes, Mr. Dashit. I'll just tell you, uh, Signet Corporation uh, was a trading house, and mm-hmm. um, uh, they had some of the, uh, you know, the leaders uh, as principals. So they had DuPont as one of their principals, and uh, they had India, India, Bangladesh, and uh, uh, Sri Lanka as their regions. So they were actually importing the uh, finished products, stocking it, and selling it out to the local industry in India. Uh, now, because they were having leaders in the industry, leaders, DuPont is uh, the number one player in the industry, uh, they had different uh, different pricing, you know, the industry leader level pricing. And uh, that speaks about the reason that uh, they have certain uh, uh, average realizations which are better than us. Uh, now, on the second part of the question where they uh, it shows as approximately 6 lakhs per ton, uh, I believe that it's a combination of a lot of other XCPNs uh, which kind of uh, are being sold together under the broad name of cellulose-based XCPNs. So they're not really a manufacturing house, they're a trading house. Okay, so yeah, so you mean to say that because of uh, the MNC kind of uh, uh, profile they have while they get products from Viewpoint and all, the pricing uh, uh, varies a, a lot. So would it be uh, fair to assume that, uh, I mean, since we kind of also cater to domestic and market here, uh, and I, I earlier I understand that you said the product profile more or less is not that different uh, uh, when we kind of uh, either we sell or probably any other uh, competitor sells. So in this case, uh, would it be fair to assume that uh, the realization would be different uh, if we kind of the products are imported? Uh, is it getting the same domestic market? Um, so uh, when when it is the world leaders who are selling it locally, uh, they have a different price point. I think one would agree to that. Um, the second reason that it looks a bit uh, enormous or big in size is on account of the depreciated rupee. Uh, because you know uh, you're converting it into the rupee form. What we when we look around, uh, we usually see uh, that uh, they are in notch higher than our pricing in dollars. And uh, if the product mix uh, what they sell is better, uh, then they go a couple of notches higher. Okay, got it. So the price is a bit higher for them than what we kind of uh, sell in domestic. That would be a, a fair assumption. Yes. Right? Uh, Yes, yes. Uh, because they are leaders, uh, they manage to extract that price from the big players, and sometimes big players discount out the local strength of uh, industries here, and they believe that uh, importing from the leaders would give them an edge by spending a bit more. Uh, it's nothing else. Uh, there are so many customers where we have kind of displaced uh, the top num- number one uh, player in the world, and uh, we, have, we continue to be supplying them even today. Got it. So, would you kind of, uh, would we kind of, uh, kind of dig deep into all these clients? Because if we look at their volumes, what they did um, a year back was somewhere around eight to nine thousand metric tons. Uh, so, can that be an addressable market also to us in India, or do you think the customer profile is completely different than what we can cater to? Your second statement speaks the answer that their customer profile are primarily the innovators. And historically, innovators, uh, innovator companies have been working with the world number one. Uh, we have been trying to get into the innovator uh, companies, uh, but it is still work in progress. And um, their customer profile is primarily the innovator, whereas ours is uh, more to do with the generics. Got it, got it. And the last question on the ethanol side, where we had announced a project or kind of uh, uh, drawing both states, of going yes. into that. So uh, is that still on the board or we have uh, kind of uh, moved ahead, uh, I mean, in terms of not doing that? Uh, so uh, we are kind of uh, mentally, uh, you know, going on the other side of the border where we are feeling that 
it might not be the best thing to do. So we are looking at every possible alternatives and maybe in another couple of months, uh, we should be very clear on this and we will bring it out. Uh, we are we having a debate with uh, a lot of industry people trying to discuss certain situation among our own team members and then putting it across uh, to every other people whom we feel are relevant and you know the industry veterans. We are trying to assimilate, uh, but overall we feel that probably uh, it will be a very tough change for us. But at this moment, it's not a decision, it's a work in progress. And we should update uh, uh, this maybe in another couple of months on this. Okay, so thank you so much for your answers. Thank, thank you. you very much, sir. The next question is on the line of Anurag Dinkar Patil from Roha Asset Managers. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Sir, in terms of human intrusion segment, are we outsourcing the manufacturing or using the own capacity? Uh, which segment did you speak of, Anurag? I, I missed out. Human? Human nutrition, sir. Human nutrition. So, uh, what we have done is, sir, uh, we are not outsourcing it. Uh, we have taken on lease a, a premix facility and uh, we are manufacturing it in that premix facility itself. Okay. So, sir, uh, over the next two to three years, can you just elaborate on your plans in terms of capital allocation? Because we are thinking a lot of projects uh, simultaneously like ethanol, human nutrition, the OTC products. We also incorporated a subsidiary in Dubai. So, if you can just elaborate on that hmm. part over the next two, three years, what are your preferences particularly? Thank you, sir. I'll do that, Anurag. So, uh, in terms of uh, subsidiary at uh, Dubai, uh, the prime purpose of the subsidiary was to uh, further our sales in the region. Uh, uh, the Middle East and the North African market is a very scattered market, and we realized that it would be very good if we have local people there. So, uh, we kept Dubai as a base, and uh, we'll have sales teams or local people uh, across the various regions and the countries for furthering our sales. So there is going to be no CAPEX, it's only operational expenditure. Uh, now, in terms of ethanol, uh, like I spoke in my last statement, it's a work in progress, and we are looking to see if it is worthwhile to go ahead on that. So ethanol uh, is on uh, kind of, you know, uh, in abeyance and is being debated over internally. Uh, in terms of human nutrition, at this moment, uh, we have no further expenditure on human nutrition. Like I indicated, uh, we have the plant on lease for a 10-year period, and we will be using the complete facility to get into the premix market and further our sales. So in, even in the human nutrition, at this moment, uh, there is no further capex. Now, now what the capex cycle, what we see um, uh, at this moment is primarily for the two expansion of the two MCC facilities, which is a brownfield facility, and the cross carbonyl sodium, which will be a greenfield facility at the age. Uh, as regards the OTC, uh, because we are a kind of, uh, you know, the healthcare, we are launching the healthcare, we are having a contract manufactured from some trusted, good, reputed players in the North Indian region. And uh, so there is no capex uh, coming in on account of jumping into this category as well. Did I answer your question, Anurag? Yes, sir. That answers my question. Thank you very much for a detailed answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you the sir. next question is on the line of Vignesh Ayer from Sequent Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, congratulations, sir. Good, good set of alumni. <coughs> in in such a circumstances, uh, I just wanted to know about uh, our uh, this sodium excipient, cross sodium excipient. So what is the now uh, expected date of commencement of production of uh, as in commencement of that uh, facility or production facility? Can you tell me? So. Uh, yes. Uh, so Vignesh, uh, we are in the current process of getting the EC clearance for our the the hedge land which we have acquired recently. So uh, okay. because EC is a, uh, is an activity which uh, kind of goes uh, from six months to twelve months. We really are not in a position to commit you a date. But uh, once the EC clearance is uh, in place, uh, we will definitely have a date to it because everything else is already structured in the project management team members. So uh, once the EC is kind of in our hands, we will give a date to it. But at this moment, it will be inappropriate to bring out a specific date, sir. Okay. But, but in la oh, okay, fair enough. So, uh, and uh, uh, coming to second, uh, I remember the last call, uh, you had given uh, the 
uh, the spreads were around average five hundred dollars, if I'm not wrong. So if you could uh, comment on how how the spreads are as uh, as of now means. <coughs> Okay, I um, I'll have to go deeper into this. Into this, uh, OSR, you have an idea um, uh, of this uh, the the spread being discussed? Yeah, that uh, spread uh, Jagadia and the H. The project cost you are uh, talking, uh, uh, Vignesh? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, this uh, Jagadia and the H. Uh, uh, there is a total uh, 29 crores at the H and uh, 29 crores at Jagadia and 27 crores at uh, the age out of which year, 16 crores is unspent as on 30th June, and uh, that also will be completed uh, by end of uh, this year, means before first quarter, before last quarter of this year, uh, we linker uh, the capex. And uh, CCS that is unspent, that is uh, 33 crores is there. The total unspent amount uh, that is lying in uh, fixed deposits with banks. No, no, sir. Means I asked about the product spread that we we had discussed in the last quarter's phone call about the product, how the spreads were turning to be. You said it would be somewhere around seven hundred to nine hundred dollars. Then, but the average spread came around five hundred dollars uh, okay. to ascertain how the prices were of the product. Yeah. So I just wanted to know, com compared to that, uh, how is the spread as as things stands now? Yeah, the pricing spread. Ah, yeah, yeah, pricing. Yeah, the, uh, the pricing, uh, last year it was 182 average and uh, this first quarter uh, we have achieved uh, 216.79 mm -hmm. and uh, going forward uh, it will further increase. Uh, so, uh, if, in terms if of it is a raw material, yeah, okay. that is around, uh, uh, now it is increased almost 20-25%. Uh, uh, from uh, okay. 650 to now $850, $900. Uh, Per metric ton, it's there. Okay, so, uh, so the average would be around $900 this quarter. That is on higher side, but average that would be around eight, uh, $28, $30. Uh, okay, uh, just sir, one thing. So if, if I go quarter on quarter, uh, there is around 8% improvement in net sales. So how much is the contribution toward volume and how much is due to realization? Is there a degrowth in volume? Yeah. Uh, around 19 percent is there on uh, price realization and the quantity is uh, 10 percent is there. So means 10 percent degrowth in volume you meant to say? 10 percent uh, that is uh, no, no. the pricing of uh, raw material is different and the uh, selling price is different. No, no, I am I am asking if quarter on quarter I compare sales, the sales has increased by 8 percent. So I wanted to know quarter on quarter what is the contribution uh, by volumes and by realization. Well, this is the last quarter versus current year. Uh, when yes. you see the revenue growth, that is around 45% is there from uh, Q1 of last year versus Q1 of current year. Uh -huh. And uh, in uh, the pricing, uh, last FI22, uh, the pricing is average pricing is, was 182. Now, the, in the first quarter, uh, the average pricing is uh, 216.8, around 217 uh, is the price. That is on selling price. Okay, okay. Fine. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sagar Shah from Flip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, my uh, first question was regarding to your capacity. I, uh, I guess your capacity is around 13,800 tons per annum. So basically, first uh, first question was related to the get some uh, volume numbers actually. Sorry okay. to interrupt, sir. Uh, Mr. Sagar Shah, there's a lot of disturbance from your line. Uh, one second. Uh, can you give your volume numbers, sir, please? Volume, uh, last year it was 13,800 metric tons. This year, uh, uh, roughly more than uh, 14,000, uh, around 14,500 metric tons. It is uh, available as on uh, based on now uh, first quarter uh, results. First quarter performance. So your uh, fourteen thousand five hundred tons is your yeah. is your current uh, yes. is your, uh, current sales volume. Uh, yeah, uh, let me tell you. In the last quarter, uh, it will uh, it will vary because of uh, additional uh, capacity will come in. Additional capacities of seven thousand uh, will be added in the last quarter. 
As of now, uh, this is uh, 3,650 in the for one quarter. That is equivalent to uh, for four quarters, it will be 14,600 metric ton. Without considering the additional uh, okay. increase. Okay. Okay. Basically, 3,650 tons is your uh, sales volume for this quarter. Yeah, that is the capacity in total. Okay, and so uh, we have achieved around 3,500, around uh, 95-96 percent is the utilization. Okay, so basically, we, what is your uh, nameplate capacity for MCC current meter? Uh, can you please repeat the capacity? Uh, yeah, the, what is the total capacity of the company, manufacturing yeah. capacity of the company? Yeah, yeah, that's what uh, MCC the manufacturing capacity 4,600 uh, uh, per annum will come without considering the upcoming uh, uh, increased uh, capacity. In last quarter, it is going to add up for 7,000 metric tons without considering that. Uh, right now, based on first quarter, first quarter uh, the cap available capacity is 3,650 metric tons. Huh. If that is multiplied by four. This is uh, it will come fourteen thousand six hundred. Uh, fourteen thousand six hundred basically is your uh, capacity of the company. Okay, so now my uh, as we are pouring into a different product for uh, human nutrition. So uh, can you explain first of all what is the market or globally and in I mean specifically in the domestic market the market price. Secondly, uh, the EBITDA margins of this segment. Are as same as the MCC. I wanted to understand on that part. The EBITDA margins are uh, uh, even uh, lower than uh, MCC. These margins are lower than MCC. And, okay. Uh, so, so what are the margins sir, in in that segment? Tell me, please. Yeah, that is uh, now it is under a very preliminary stage, but uh, less than okay. this. But this year uh, we may expect uh, around uh, 18 uh, crores of revenue from that. Uh, still, uh, uh, we need to uh, study further, and then that is a very pre preliminary stage here uh, to tell you any figure. Okay, so basically, 18 crores of revenue you are expecting in the entire year, right? Yeah, this year, yes. And what is the amount that you will be spending for this capacity? Or I think you told that you will be taking some land on lease. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. This is on uh, lease premises. We lease. Uh, uh, so, what is the amount that you will be spending to produce this product? Yeah, this is uh, 15 uh, operational expenditure towards lease rental and uh, roughly 1.8 CR uh, is the lease rental. This is uh, without any incurrence of capex, uh, we can uh, generate the revenues and uh, we explore our uh, market. Uh, uh, networking also with this and you know, OTC, that is an additional advantage to enter into a B2C segment. Yeah, uh, but 1.5 crores uh, the, 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 is the lease rental for the entire year, right? Yeah, yes, it's 1.8, 15 lakhs per month. Okay, okay. crores of revenue that you are expecting from this segment. Yeah. Okay. Now my uh, next question was related to your uh, the uh, uh, we, uh, you have already told about your NCC uh, which is going to commission you Q4 FI23. But yes. uh, to understand that yes, product actually, uh, can you explain the market size? Can you explain the significance of this product? And can you explain the on the realization front? Uh, which one uh, you are talking about? The existing NCC or uh, the uh, CCS cross uh, cross thermal loss? Cross thermal loss. Yeah. yeah. This uh, it will take time. Not this year it will come. But this uh, we are just uh, acquired land and then uh, we have applied for uh, the we need to get to get the EC, EC clearances and other approvals for setting up this plant. And this is uh, uh, the realization is also higher when we compare it to MCC cross thermal loss sodium. Uh, this is a superior grade of ACBN. Yeah, so uh, my uh, question was that uh, you are saying this is a superior product as compared to NCC. It has a wider uh, significance. 
so why are you focusing on the other segment on the nutrition part instead of focus not focus on ecs or uh, maybe yeah. expanding even more on this no, uh, yeah uh, so uh, you know uh, uh, it is not that we are not focusing on ccs sir ccs is already a work in progress we are looking at uh, getting the ec certification of the facility and proceeding with the project so it is not that uh, by focusing on the nutrition part we are defocusing on uh, the ccs there are two separate teams there are two separate facilities and uh, there are different locations so um, it is it is uh, not that we are defocusing on ccs ccs continues to be as part of our agenda and it's a work in progress which will finally certify and it will give us revenues mm -hmm. okay all are our uh, prime areas only sir and uh, there are uh, a specialized people and uh, uh, we'll take care of all are important uh, for the company okay so uh, and my uh, last question sir who uh, uh, the a bit of marketing that the company is uh, are enjoying is enjoying right now in the first quarter around 21 22% are they sustainable for the entire year even and even for next year some kind of a bit of marketing guidance can you give Yes, sir. Yes, sir. These are sustainable margins, profits, even growth and uh, even uh, EBITDA and uh, profit margins are uh, sustainable in future. Okay. Okay. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Kushal from Strontium Enterprises. Please go ahead. My first question is for CFO. Yes. Yeah. Uh, since we export, uh, sixty percent of our revenue comes from export, and are we reaping the benefits of rupee depreciation? If yes, what is the revenue mix across geographies, and what does this rupee depreciation impact on our margins, either positive or negative? And also, how is Sigachi positioned to face the macroeconomic headwinds, and are we process? Are we Um, moving any price hikes and uh, are we comfortable and uh, customers are they comfortable with price hikes and uh, is it impacting the margins going forward yes yes this uh, coming to the uh, export uh, export business and uh, almost we have uh, even uh, 75% of our uh, products goes uh, into abroad export and uh, around 25% uh, comes from the domestic uh, market and in rupee appreciation uh, rupee depreciation the exchange fluctuation uh, impact that is a positive for us because uh, we are the net forex uh, earnings for surplus is there and uh, this is a favorable uh, for the company and uh, any increase in raw material cost uh, we could able to pass on to the customers and uh, any increase uh, because of um, uh, this uh, adverse uh, uh, rupee fluctuation uh, in uh, uh, considering the services or uh, imports that we could able to pass and then uh, anyway on exports we are getting uh, the benefit out of it my second question would be for the customers also they are um, uh, taking we could able to pass it on and then they are accepting it yeah okay okay fine that clears my question my second question would be for ceo and in the recent interview with economic times you have said that the nutraceutical segment revenue would be 20 to 20 to 50% of total revenues in the next two years and you also said about the total revenues would be close to doubling in the next two years and uh, is the ebit margin of 20 similar to 20% sustainable in the next two years so uh, the ebit margins of uh, the our excipient line are definitely sustainable and going forward as we add in capacities for uh, mcc and we expand into the portfolio of ccs we believe that the margins are only going to get better Uh, on account of uh, the expansion into uh, the nutrition and into uh, certain OTC healthcare products, we definitely see an increase in top line. Uh, in the initial phase, uh, we see that uh, you know uh, positioning ourselves so that we are able to capture more market. Uh, we would have uh, certain um, EBITAs, uh, you know, drop in margins on uh, our average uh, 20% EBITA lower than that. 
Uh, however, uh, as we continue to service and as we continue to expand our product portfolio, we believe that we should be able to come back to our base margin of 20% per data. And uh, you are foray into the Dubai subsidiary and when can we expect it to be commissioned? And how, when can uh, when, so the, when can it uh, be operational? Yes, uh, the Dubai subsidiary is uh, more of a market presence rather than a facility. We are not investing into a facility in Dubai. Dubai is not the best place for a facility. It's only a market presence where we'll have local teams, local teams to kind of, uh, you know, go out to the North African region, to the Middle East region and further our sales. So that activity is already underway. We have appointed a CEO for the Dubai subsidiary, and uh, we will be appointing the local people there to take on the sales team roles. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be taking the last question. That is in the line of Dharma Venkatesan, an individual inv investor. Please go ahead. Uh -huh. Thank you for the opportunity and hope you are doing well and good, sir. Thank you, Dharma. We are doing good. Uh, sir, I have two suggestions, not questions, actually. First suggestion is that uh, even the, it was actually already referred, but I'm just referring it again here. Regarding the royalty which we are paying, uh, like, it would, uh, like I would suggest the management to consider it more in terms of a performance-related uh, some kind of payment on that of net sales, uh, net profit rather than of net sales. That is the first suggestion. And second, second question, second thing would be regarding the ethanol. What like what is the thought process in the first place to consider it? Because we don't we don't have any kind of uh, forward or backward integration or any kind of uh, anything related to that ethanol thing as such. So what was the first thought process in that to consider that in the first place? Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Dharma. Appreciate your suggestion. On the first suggestion of uh, royalty, uh, we did have a question earlier in uh, the con call, and uh, we did indicate that uh, rather than having it as a figure of um, the top line, it should be on the performance base as a figure of the bottom line. And uh, we, uh, we have confirmed to him that we will do our homework and see which way we can align so that uh, it is fair. Uh, now, in terms of the second question of ethanol, uh, uh, as and when, uh, you know, uh, the, the, um, the political leadership were coming out with certain um, overall broad targets and activities in terms of uh, having an ethanol blend on our fuel, uh, we thought it could be a good opportunity and uh, we did appoint a consultant to explore feasibility. Uh, that is currently underway and as we explore and as we talk more to the stakeholders, we realize that uh, you know there are certain aspects of this uh, 